Hey there guys, today we're taking a look at Spider-Man Remastered running on the AMD Ryzen 5 5600H. Now this is currently running on the B-Link SER5 mini PC. This has been one of my favorite systems that I've picked up in a while. The level of performance that you can actually get out of this system is really, really impressive. Now you're seeing the game currently running right now at 1080p with the lowest in-game graphics settings. And you can see here on the screen exactly what it is that I ended up doing because if you just go with the lowest preset, there are still certain effects that remain on. Now, for the most part, these settings don't necessarily need to be on or off. You don't really gain too much in terms of performance, but especially with the lower settings, I find that a lot of these extra effects actually end up ruining the image because everything else is already running at a lower quality. So having these extra effects on there kind of just tends to blur the whole image. And in general, you do see a small little bump in performance just from having all of these post effects off. But once you actually have them off, the level of performance that we get in the game at the full 1080p resolution, while not incredible, is still relatively impressive. We're looking at what is essentially a 30 FPS average most of the time, though realistically speaking, we are actually just slightly below that. The biggest downside is, of course, the fact that the 1% lows are in the teens, which is not exactly a great experience. And realistically, if you were going to be playing this game, I would recommend that you lock the FPS to 30 and turn on dynamic resolution scaling. But at the full 1080p resolution, we are at least at a level where you could actually kind of get away with playing it. I at least was able to play it for a solid hour like this. Now, I actually ended up playing it for that long just because I ended up listening to the most recent episode of the Yard podcast. So I kind of just ended up zoning out. But I think that's a testament to just how good the performance was where I could realistically actually get away with playing like this. The, the level of performance is a little inconsistent here and there, especially when you first start off. With almost any DirectX 12 game, what you need to do is you need to let it play for a while before things level off. What I was actually finding was that as I was playing the game in the very beginning and I was swinging around, I would get these freezes that weren't actually frame drops or anything like that, but it, everything would just freeze while things kind of just loaded in. Now, I thought that this was going to be a consistent problem, but it really actually leveled out after about 10 minutes of playing and it just never occurred again. And this is just something that happens with any game that runs on DirectX 12. Even DirectX 11 games actually require a little bit of time for shaders and all that to load in. It's just far more prevalent with DirectX 12 games. So anytime you're playing a game that runs on these APIs, I would recommend that you give it some time to level out before you actually start paying attention to the FPS numbers. But in terms of the performance, while 1080p is doing at least decent enough, we can try to boost the performance a bit by dropping things down to 9 900p and by doing so we're actually able to boost the performance to at least give us an fps average that is now above 30 even though our one percent lows are falling below that it was at least again consistent enough that i was able to continue to play like this without too much trouble i was pretty much able to swing around the city find any criminals around and just take them out without any real problems and i never really felt like i was suffering too much in terms of the fps if I didn't have the FPS counter there, I could probably get away with just playing the game like this. It's not the most ideal situation, and on my desktop with an RTX 3070 Ti, it's just a whole completely different level of performance but on a system like this this is actually really impressive levels of performance now of course the one percent lows are disappointing to see going below 30 but that is kind of to be expected in a game that is this heavy i'm just impressed that it was actually reasonable to play like this i actually ended up having a really good time playing and i think that's the biggest indicator that something is doing a good job if i can just sit there and play it and not really care too much certainly it's not the smoothest experience i don't want to convince you that this is going to be the greatest experience you can have in this spider-man game but it is fun and at the end of the day is that not what we're doing when we play games we're just trying to have fun so if you have a system like this and you're looking to play this game you can realistically get away with it now of course we can drop the resolution even more down to 720p and see what that does to the overall performance but 900p felt really nice to me and realistically i could probably get away with playing like this no problem and would more than likely be the most ideal situation since visually it doesn't really look blurry or anything like that. The drop in resolution gives us a nice boost in performance without really sacrificing too much in the visual quality. But we'll see what 720p does for the performance. And it's that drop down to 720p that actually does net us a really nice boost in performance where our 1% lows are now in the 30 FPS range and our averages are in the mid 40s. It really overall does feel really nice to play though visually speaking 
speaking, it does start to look really, really rough on a 1080p monitor. But I am extremely, extremely impressed with the level of performance of the B-Link SER5 mini PC. It's really one of my favorite systems that I've ever gotten my hands on. It's just such a compact and small system, and the level of performance that you get in a lot of titles is just incredible. Not to mention there's a lot of utility to having such a small system that has this level of performance. I will say though that pairing this with a 900p monitor might actually be a overall better investment for you in the long run. Now 1080p monitors are very prevalent and they're all over the place, and if you have a 1080p monitor already, there's really no reason to downgrade to some Thing that's 900p but if you're looking to set up a system for yourself on a ultra budget or you have a family member that you're trying to get set up with a gaming system or even if you have your own kids that you want to buy systems for where they can play games like roblox and minecraft and even a lot of older AAA titles and even newer ones with a reasonable level of performance without having to shell out a crazy amount of money just to set them up with systems since hardware is still very expensive. It's not a bad move to pick up a budget mini PC like this, especially because they go on sale all the time. You will always find these with some kind of discount on Amazon and it's always worth taking a look to see if you can get yourself a nice deal with this. And if you pair it with this specific monitor right here you're looking at a really powerful combo here where you have a monitor here where it has good enough visual quality it goes all the way up to 75 hertz and it's 900p for only 80 dollars and you're gonna have essentially a display that pairs really well with the igpu here and that 75 hertz is actually gonna come in handy in lighter titles that in general already give you some pretty high fps especially because a lot of older titles at 900p on this specific system do actually give you a more than above 60 fps gaming experience so it's actually a really nice combo there so if you're interested in the mini pc itself or that monitor or getting both and combining them together they are linked down below and trust me it is a good combination because like i said i would play this game at 900p on this system the level of performance was decent enough that i really did not find too much in terms of issues on here and if you liked the performance at 720p and that's the level of performance that you want to get 720p is going to look better on that 900p display than it will on a 1080p display and of course if you do just want to get a 1080p display you can always do that and they have 75 hertz displays that are full 1080p for just ten dollars more and it's not a bad buy either because getting a display that goes all the way up to 75 hertz and has free sync is going to give you a nice experience with a system like this so it's definitely something to consider and i'm just continuously blown away by the level of performance that you can get out of here we're going to be taking a look at some other AAA titles later on think things like elden ring and i think you're going to be surprised by the level of performance that you can really get out of here so again if you want to pick up this system you can check it out linked down below absolutely one of my favorite systems and i really think that it's a worthwhile system to get because the level of performance is remarkable for the size so i hope you found this video interesting if you did be sure to subscribe and i will see you guys in the next one